We'll call the meeting to order uh, at 5.30. Uh, read the standard opening statement. This is the Northampton Conservation Commission for the 12th of May, 2022. Commission is a group of unpaid volunteers who work to protect the natural environment of Northampton. We are concerned with the eight interests defined in the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act, and our duties also include open space acquisition and management. We operate in a way that's consistent with open meeting law requirements. All meeting dates, times, and agendas are posted in advance, and we invite public comment during our meetings. However, we ask the public to limit their comments to issues that are within our purview. Today's agenda includes uh, a request for determination of applicability to determine if demolition and removal of an existing structure uh, will alter resource areas. This on Cook Avenue, the old Moose Lodge. Uh, a request for a determination of applicability to determine if sewer upgrade work within the buffer zone. This is the VA center uh, to see if that will alter resource areas. And then a notice of intent um, for drainage improvements um, disconnecting storm drains um, and uh, then a, a couple of other uh, items that are not uh, public hearings. Um, if, if anyone is waiting for the Winter Street item, DPW has requested a continuation um, <coughs> until the next meeting, so there won't be any discussion of that item held today. It'll just be continued without really opening the hearing. Correct. Um, all right, we have a, 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 a set of minutes that you sent around, which I read, but I forget the date. December something. Was it December? December 9th. December 9th. Um, looked okay to me. Someone want to make a motion to accept those minutes? So moved. And a second? Second. Any uh, modifications or amendments? If not, all in favor? Hi, Sarah, you need a roll call. We do. Uh, Mason? Yes. Alec? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Jen? Yes. And Randy? Uh, I abstain. I wasn't there. Okay. All right. So we'll move on to, uh, well, first, let me see. Is there any general public comment not having to do with a specific case that we're going to address today? Sir, I see a hand waving, uh, Mr. Hudson. Yeah, uh, which takes precedence, the city's ordinance on wetlands or the state ordinance? Uh, well, it depends on, Sarah, you wanna answer the technicalities of that? Cause there are times when the city ordinance will uh, govern and cause it tends to be a little bit more restrictive. The question is, it, it, and the, uh, there are other times when the state uh, will uh, govern because certain entities don't have to abide by home rule uh, regulations. So Sarah, you wanna answer that more completely? Sure, so uh, as I have to do so often with questions about wetlands without specifics, I have to say that it depends. Um, in most instances, the city ordinance is stricter than the Wetlands Protection Act, but as Kevin noted, there are some instances where the wetlands ordinance does not apply. Uh, or where an organization is not subject to the terms of the Wellness Protection Act. Does that answer your question? Who wins? Um, not hearing you. I uh, think. I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? Yes. Uh, the the state ordinance gives a 200 foot protection of riparian zones, and the city ordinance gives a hundred foot protection of riparian zones, and it makes a difference for the cutlery um, uh, uh, NOI that's before you today. I was wondering which took precedence. So the, there's a 200 foot riparian zone. Uh, from the bank of a river in all instances where something is a perennial stream. Um, and Rick, I, I owe you and you, I know you had some questions about some really specific details of the, the cutlery project. Um, and I can get back to you separately about those. And the, the cutlery is also not on today's agenda, except as a correspondence. I, 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 that's why I didn't bring, I didn't mean to bring the cutlery up. I was trying to frame it as a, uh, 
a more specific general question. I guess I didn't do a very good job. Sorry. Yeah, I, in the instance that you're referring to, I think it's just that they forgot to push a button and so, show something on a plan where they should have. Okay, well, I'll, I'll, I'll check there, see if it's 200 feet when we get the next one. Okay. All right, anything else? If not, we'll move to the first hearing. Uh, a request for determination of applicability to determine if demolition or removal of an existing structure within the buffer zone will alter resource areas. Uh, this uh, is a city project, uh, the old Moose Lodge on Cook Avenue. Someone representing the city? Yes, hi, uh, Wayne Feiden, Director of Planning Sustainability. Um, so let me walk you through this quickly. So the old Moose Lodge is what you see on the screen now. The city just purchased this, I don't know, about a week ago, a week and a half ago. Um, so it's 196 Cook Avenue. It's officially on Boggy Meadow Road, even though there's a Cook Avenue address. Um, what's circled here on the air photo is the old Moose Lodge itself. It's part of a 22 acre watershed. So going back to the question you just heard, regardless of whether the stream through the property flows year round or not, it's not a perennial stream. Um, and we basically, we just want to tear down the building. We will be coming back to you at some point with a replacement property, but obviously that's a separate process. So that's not before you tonight. So on this view, you see it's a little bit faded, but you see the building itself, which is on the upper right-hand corner of the property, um, sort of the northwesterly corner of the property. We want to remove the entire building foundation, all the man-made stuff that's over there. The very dark red line is just the erosion control barrier we want to put up. And so the plan is first to remediate the asbestos because the building does have asbestos in it. Um, OTO is our asbestos consultant and we'll be removing it in accordance with the, their standards and under this supervision. Um, and then once the asbestos is removed, we'd be tearing down the building. Um, the building is, uh, I don't know, 80% of the building is within the buffer zone, 20% is with the, is not. We are not asking you, to, however, to approve the wetland lines exactly. Um, so we hired Ward Smith who did the boundaries, but we need to come back with soils before we build the property. So the boundaries are close. They could be off by five feet or 10 feet. And obviously when we come back to you to build something else, we're asked for that. Um, so pretty straightforward project uh, in the process. Again, this is just sort of the, the watershed itself. Um, but I think that's really all I have. We are, um, this is going to be paid for with federal block grant funds, which we don't get released until sometime in July. So it's our intention to line up the permits now. Um, so we're ready to go, but we wouldn't actually demolish it till sometime this summer once we have those federal funds. And we're, you know, we're a city agency, we have to go to bid, and the bid process itself takes about six to eight weeks. Can you stay again? The, the demolition is going to take how long? So demolition, I mean, we did a house at Burt's Pit Road. And that was about a week and a half. So I don't know exactly, no. The, the asbestos actually takes longer. The asbestos yeah. remediation is, you know, could be up to a week. The demo is probably literally one day, maybe a little bit longer to take the foundation out. Okay. Questions from commissioners? I just had a clarifying question. Wayne, the first map you showed us, the green outline was the watershed outline. Is that correct? And the That's second. Correct. Okay, and the second map was an outline of the actual property. Is that yes, right? Yes, that's correct. Yeah, so here's the watershed. Now, we own, the city owns as a conservation area. So this is a Pine's Edge, mm -hmm. if you can see my cursor. So maybe a third of the watershed is um, part of Pine's Edge. A little bit of is Lathrop Community over here. And the rest is a portion of Broadbrook Fitzgerald Lake. Um, of which is obviously a much larger, you know, thousand acre conservation area, but there's a watershed divide. And Great. Then, yeah, here, here's our so. Thank you. Great. And the significance of the size of the watershed? Um, one of the neighbors at Pine's Edge was concerned the stream was a perennial stream because they thought it flowed year round. Um, and it takes half mile watershed to be perennial. So I'm not, 
I don't, I've never, I have seen it drive sometimes. I can't tell you how often, but from a Rivers Act perspective, it's not, a, it's not a perennial stream. Yeah, okay. Other questions, comments from commissioners? If not, um, seems like there's no increase in impervious service, no disruption um, to uh, jurisdictional area, um, with installation of erosion controls or demarcated on the proposal seems pretty straightforward. Um, someone want to make a, a motion? Let's see, which, which box, Sarah? Box three, negative determination. Um, uh, box three, that it will not dredge, fill, or alter. There's a move. And a second? A second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor, Sarah? Mason? Yes. Alec? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Jen? Yes. Randy? Yes. And Jason? Yes. Thank you all very much. Have a good evening. Thanks, okay. Wayne. Thanks. Thank you, Wayne. Uh, we got a couple of minutes, I think. Oh, one minute, probably close enough, but is there a one minute item we can address, Sarah? A um, couple quick ones. I don't, I don't think I'm that speedy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait another few seconds till the iPhone clicks to 545. I have a quick question for Sarah. Yeah. Um, when are we, when are meetings going back to being in person or has that not been decided yet? So it, it's up to the commission. Um, you know, if people are ready to start meeting in person, we could certainly do that. Um, we are working within the city to be able to offer hybrid meetings where people can watch at home in real time. Um, I don't know exactly where that stands at the moment, um, but I, I know the IT department has been working on it, but it, you know, if people are comfortable meeting in person and schedules allow it, that's something we could certainly discuss. Okay, I didn't mean to open the can of worms of a discussion. <laughs> I just wasn't sure what the um, rule was. From yeah, I mean, currently the state law that extended the emergency provisions of the open meeting law uh, will expire, I think, July 15th. Uh, okay. So unless the state tech takes additional action to extend that further, then we will have to go back to in person. Okay, that's what I was, I guess, asking. Thank you. Well, and and uh, some towns are reinstituting mask mandates in schools, so um, it, uh, people are getting cautious again. So uh, we'll, we'll we'll see how things evolve. Now it's well, 540. They should because it's spiking in Boston. And yes, right. Well, in Hampshire County too, it's been a pretty steep increase, and a lot of that's the university, but not all of it. Um, so now we are at 545. Uh, next case is a request for determination of applicability to determine if sewer upgrade work within the buffer zone in the wetlands will alter resource areas. This is the VA Medical Center. Um, who's here representing uh, that applicant? Yes, my name is Don Majoli. I apologize for my camera. For some reason, it's the opposite direction. <laughs> <laughs> my iPad here, so I'm sorry about that. <laughs> nice but, table. <laughs> but I am here. <laughs> so I'll share my screen. Oh. Uh, I think Sarah can let you do that. Yeah, uh, you should be all set now. Okay, can everybody see? Yes. Okay. So this is a project at the VA facility for a sewer replacement project. It's going to be a replacement in place, as you can see in the yellow highlight here. Uh, on the drawing itself, the, we had a, a wetlands delineation consultant delineate the wetlands in blue. And the buffer is the dotted line here. And as you can see, we're outside the 100 foot buffer zone. So we're asking for a determination of 
for applicability in accordance with the wetlands um, regulation. Are there any questions? Questions from commissioners? Yeah, will any, oh, go ahead. I was just going to ask, will any work be done within the 100 foot buffer? Negative. Okay. So the place where it bumps right up against the limit, you'll be working from the other side. Any machinery and stuff will be from the other side. Correct. And we also have erosion controls as well uh, on the uh, where it is. So they'll be probably working on the uh, upgrading side where they'll be cutting in, replacing the soil pipe, okay. and backfilling. Okay. And it's in the moment as well. And in some cases, it'll just be paving. It's within the paved area right here. It's parking lot. And there's also a paved area right here. This is a grassy area right here, as well as right here. Right, right along the edge here is all pavement as well. Any other questions? It's all tied into the city sewer system? This area, yes. This is sanitary sewer. OK. Are you replacing it with the exact same size diameter pipe? Yes, we are. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments? And I couldn't tell if there are any members of the public still on this. Uh, in the room <laughs> on the screen, uh, we might have comments or questions. If not, um, once again, seems pretty straightforward. Uh, someone want to make a um, motion uh, to issue a negative determination in box three that um, it's uh, bumps up into a jurisdictional area, but will not. Is, is that a dredge filler alter phrase? I'm not looking at the right form right now, Sarah. But. Yeah, so this would indicate that a, a portion of the work, a very small portion is within the, the buffer zone, but that the work will not remove a dredge fill or alter the right. themselves. Okay. Someone want to make a motion to that effect? I'll move. And a second? I'll second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor, Sarah? Right. Mason? Yes. Alec? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Jen? Yes. Randy? Yes. And Jason? Yes. All right. Great. Thank you. All right. Now the third uh, all right, case. Thank you. I'm going to sign off right now. Thank you. Okay. Guys. Okay. Thank thanks, you. Tom. Thank you. Thank uh, you. The Third case, which we would have to wait till six, is not going to happen because uh, they're just asking for a continuation. So, Sarah, we can, I assume, vote the continuation earlier than the um, open meeting law required. Time. Uh, let, just, just to be clear, let's do the the other items first, and then we can okay. come back at the All end. Right. Okay. The continuation. All right, the administrative rules of procedure. It's good to see all those in one place. All right, so I, I won't go over that in a lot of detail. Um, this was something that the Conservation Commission approved years ago and was intended to apply to um, lots of other permit granting land use boards in the city. Um, I don't know if any of those boards ever got around to approving them, but the, the CONSCOM uh, was on the ball and did that. And now, now these have just been updated to reflect current procedures of the, the Conservation Commission and others. I noticed that the uh, section two for the planning board and section three um, for the zoning board get their own sections, but um, <laughs> conservation doesn't get an independent section. We just share the same rules as everybody else. Um, yes. So some boards deal with certain types of permits that are a little yeah, more involved. Um, so in, unless there's anything really in particular beyond um, what's listed in the shared procedures yep. that anyone thinks is missing. Uh, it seemed to make sense to me. And 
I, I, I went through them. I, it seemed to make sense. Like I said, I also looked at the planning board and zoning board ones. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I couldn't think of anything that we'd want to add to add to it. But I, I didn't realize that we could, uh, as a quote unquote board, uh, as a commission, that we, we could modify uh, these rules and bylaws. I, I uh, assumed they were all governed by charter somehow. So uh, it's interesting to see that, uh, no, there's, there's a little more authority delegated down to the board level, to the commission. Level. Yeah, I mean, some things are certainly in the city charter and wouldn't be up to the conservation commission or the, any of these other boards to change it well, but you know, things about um, you know, vote proceedings and election right. of chair and those types of things can certainly be amended as yeah. needed. No reason to. Well, I, and I didn't realize that it, it says uh, uh, January of each year, the first meeting is supposed to elect a chair and vice chair. We haven't done that in, I don't know, the last 10 years, as far as I know. No, no, every, every time you're not there, we elect you. <laughs> <laughs> but they left an out in there anyway. Does, you know, every year or at our discretion, I guess. Oh, is that right? Yeah, something yeah. like that. Okay. Uh, do we need a vote on this, sir, or is this we do. for information? Great. So uh, what shall the vote say that we have reviewed and accept or reviewed and approve uh, the to, rules and bylaws? Um, so move to adopt the move to adopt. Okay. Uh, administrative bylaws. We want to get paid. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's within our authority. Oh, <laughs> that was actually a, a, a question. No. Oh probably 30 years ago, uh, whether the commission wanted to take a stipend. Apparently the planning board has, a, has one. So that they get, I don't know what they get paid, but it's not much. Uh, planning board does not. I think the oh, only, they don't. No, okay. uh, they may have it at some point. Not, not that I'm aware of, but maybe they did. Uh, school committee gets paid and city councilors get paid. And I believe that's it in Northampton. Although every, every community is different. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so, we we opted to be um, apolitical and not accept type, and so we wouldn't be tied to the uh, city council or anything. Someone want to make a motion to adopt these rules and bylaws? I'll make a motion. And a second. Second. Any further discussion? With Matt. All in favor? Right. Mason? Yes. Alec? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Jen? Yes. Randy? Yes. And Jason? Yes. All right, unanimous. Thank you. And next we have uh, open space acquisitions. So let me, um, hopefully the, the commission got a chance to take a look at these maps, but I will share yeah. the screen yep. as well. All right, so these are, are both pretty exciting acquisitions. Um, the first is the Dorkel Andros parcel in the Broadbrook Greenway. And this is about 25 acres. So it's, it's just north of the existing greenway, greenway, just south of the, the town line. You can't see it on the survey, but Fitzgerald Lake would be down here. Um, so the, this is a, a real significant gap. Um, we, the Conservation Commission owns here and yeah. also owns the land to the north as well. So this will represent a, a great trail and, and wildlife connection. And this will be funding funded through existing donations that, the, that we have on hand, as well as a, a really um, generous $15,000 contribution from the Broadbrook Coalition. Ah, great. Any questions about that one? Great, great, great. <clears throat> no, how long has this one been in the works? I mean, uh, as with everything uh, surrounding Fitzgerald Lake, this is something that the city has been hoping to acquire for quite some time, but it's just recently popped up as something that's moving forward quickly. Great. And uh, a conservation will be, restriction will be held by the Kestrel Land Trust. Uh, oh, not by Broadbrook. Yeah, um, Broadbrook got out of the conservation restriction holding business. 
they did have a couple that they held for a number of years, but decided that really wasn't part of their mission. Uh -huh. uh, so those have been transferred to other agencies. Okay. All right. So what do you need from the commission? A uh, motion to uh, move ahead with the purchase? Yeah. So um, move to support this purchase and also to support the granting of the conservation restriction to Castro. Okay. Who wants to make a motion to that effect? Moved. And a second? Second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Mason? Yes. Alec? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Jen? Yes. Randy? Yes. And Jason? Heck yes. All right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then the, the next exactly. The next one yeah. is is really exciting. We are yeah. really pleased to be able to present this one. Yeah, today. it fills um, a gap, that's for sure. Yeah, so this, big gap. Uh, so the existing so Sylvester Road is over here, uh, mm -hmm. Ryan Rose to the south. Yeah. Um, so existing land in green is land that's protected either as part of the city water supply or primarily land that's owned by the Conservation Commission. And then in the darker green uh, is property that's owned by the, the Pomeroy family, 229 acres, um, and we'll be moving forward with this for $690,000. Uh, this also is fairly recent. Um, but we're presenting this as this year's local acquisitions for natural diversity grant application and we'll be seeking CPA funds um, and hoping to get some donations for this as well. But you know, we're hoping that since this is such a significant purchase that it will score really well in the statewide application. And uh, what attributes uh, make it a good candidate for natural diversity? Uh, so it, it does have priority habitat, vernal pools, um, riparian habitat, it has tremendous trail connections. Uh, it's, a, it's a good size purchase within a significant undeveloped part of Northampton. Yeah. That should be great. So we'll, we'll be asking for the maximum award from the state program of $400,000. And then we'll have to come up with the remainder of the funds through CPA and donations. Is this and the parcel that's currently being logged? It is, yeah. It, it, it's a trend though, isn't it? <laughs> like they, they, they log it, take all the timber value and then sell it. Not that yeah, I mean, that's, that happens pretty commonly. Um, yeah. and, and the good part for the city is that it does reduce the value at an appraisal mm -hmm. and the property owner gets to take that timber value as well. And it, often it reduces hazard trees and other types of issues that we would have to deal with moving forward. It wasn't a really significant logging. It, it wasn't the entire property because of um, what they were looking to, to get and the, the species that they were logging and also the endangered species constraint. But it was presumably selectively logging for uh, for lumber or for fire logs or what? what it, it was for commercial lumber purposes. Commercial. Yeah, it's, it's currently happening. I was out there yesterday. And they've been out there for a number, maybe a month now. Uh -huh. And uh, this, the conservation restriction on this one will also help be, be held by Castro Land Trust. Okay. And so this is, uh, uh, we, uh, the language would be support or pursue um, the, this purchase, because it seems like some pieces have to fall in place in order for it to close. So only that we do have an agreement with the property owner. Um, so we're confident that we'll be able to move forward. We just have to make the funding picture fit together. Okay. So similar language to the last parcel. Yeah, uh, so agree to support the purchase and the, right. um, the transfer of the conservation. The conservation restriction. Someone make a motion for that one. Sure, so moved. And a second. Second. And any comments, discussion? If not, um, this couple of couple of good ones. Um, yeah. Very good. Sarah. All right, Mason. Yes. Alec? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Jen? Yes. Randy? Yes. And Jason? Yes. Great. Um, what else we got here? Now we're at six o'clock, so we can vote to continue. Uh, so the applicant has requested a continuation to um, 
the next meeting, Sarah, or further? Correct. Uh, it may get bounced once again. They're having some um, rights of way issues that they need to finish wrapping up before the, the city takes title to the, the end of the road there. So let's do, for now, May 26th at 5.30. All right. Someone make a motion to continue uh, till 5.30 on May 26th. So move. And a second. I don't second. know which. I don't know which one came first. Could <laughs> <Second. laughs> you just do it, do it alphabetically? <laughs> All in favor? Mason. Yes. Alec. Yes. Kevin. Yes. Jen. Yes. Randy. Yes. And Jason. Yes. All right. Unanimous. Thank you. All right. Got anything else, Sarah? Uh, so the last one is the approval of the scope of this third party review for oh, the, right. this the cutlery just came in. Yeah. Um, So I, um, so- and The applicant's I, gonna bear the cost on that. Yes, yeah. absolutely. So I, I didn't make that as explicitly clear in my staff report as I should have. Um, so staff received this proposal for third party review of the remediation uh, notice of intent scope that was included in the cutlery site. Um, you know, th this application has presented some really significant um, wetlands and riverfront alteration. And so the commission needs to be able to evaluate the alternatives. And you know, we, we just don't at the city level have the expertise to be able to uh, evaluate uh, waste site cleanup. So OTO is a, is a firm that does that. And the applicant has accepted the cost as well as the proposal and staff recommends that the commission approve the scope of this review so this can move forward. Yeah, that's, uh, Mason, I don't know when the first time you um, had a, this cutlery building issue come before the commission in your many decades uh, on the commission when I came on what 14 years ago or so it was one of the big cases right back then so it, it's been going yeah. on for a long time. I think it then it was another eight years ago with another round going on with it. And then... So would this be a really comprehensive uh, evaluation Sarah? It, it looked like a good description but then it added up to five thousand dollars which I thought eh, I don't know if they're going to uh, you know how much they can get to for five thousand dollars given the hourly rates that are in the application sure so this isn't an evaluation of the the entire proposal this is an evaluation of the alternatives proposed under the waste site remediation i see so, okay um, so it's more narrow yeah okay. so that will allow the commission to then be able um, to review the how to apply the limited project provisions and whether there are any less damaging final solution alternatives under the, the waste site cleanup program that mm -hmm. OTO evaluates. So, you know, if um, the, the applicant is saying, you know, this, this is the alternative that we've selected, it's the only alternative. So we'd like to move forward with permitting. Um, there are a lot of cases where we've, we've permitted this under the limited project provision because the, the alterations included were pretty minor. But in this case, these are some really significant proposed alterations. So we need a little bit of outside expertise to help us review that. Good. Seems like a good idea. Is this for information or do we have to vote to approve? Uh, so a, a vote to uh, approve the scope would be great. Approve the scope of the um, evaluation by the third party OTO. Someone you want to make a motion to that effect? I just have a question if I may. Sure. So when, when OTO comes back with their findings, do um do we as a as a commission review them and render some kind of an opinion or a recommendation? I mean it, it depends on on what they say. Um, if the if the evaluation is there are there are alternatives that have significantly less resource area impacts than what's proposed here, that would result in potentially a different action than if they said, you know, the this is really the only way to deal with, with this waste issue. Mm -hmm. But I guess what I mean is that who, who decides whether the commission looks at OTO's report and like makes a decision or is that something you kind of handle, Sarah? I mean, we'll, we'll do it jointly as part of the NOI review process. Um, okay. and it, like when, when you have a, two attorneys opposing each other, 
you know, there's, there might always be one who's wrong and who disagrees, but hopefully in, in this instance, they'll be able to, if they, even if they do um, have some differing opinions, be able to work through that and, and present something. So it, it really depends on, on how the review goes and, and what it finds. Yeah, I, I read it as an additional source of information as we review the NOI. So, um, uh, and the fact that it's an independent third party whose specialty is in this kind of work seemed like, oh, that's, that, that's good additional um, uh, scope for, uh, of information for us to have. But the, the granting or not granting of permits is still our decision. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, so we would vote, though, I should ask any members of the public with comments or questions before we vote on this? If not, someone want to make a motion to uh, uh, approve the scope of this evaluation by OTO? <laughs> I haven't made a motion yet. Chair moves. Uh, is there a second? I'll second. <laughs> All right, uh, all in favor? Mason? Yes. Alec? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Jen? Yes. Randy? Yes. And Jason? Yes. All right, unanimous, thank you. Okay. Any uh, staff issue permits or interesting mail, Sarah? Uh, so the only other item I have is that um, with with Kevin's agreement, I issued an emergency certification for installation of a pond leveler on the, the south side of Cardinal Way. Uh, DPW has been concerned about uh, the road being overtopped during a few periods of heavy rain and some flooding um, associated with that beaver dam. So, so no trapping, um, just installation of this pond leveler to hopefully take, take care of the issue. Good. I've seen that a couple times driving by, so that, that should help. And did uh, uh, the owner of the golf course ever come forward? They were having to repair a, a, a culvert or in one of their fairways. That uh, I believe they are seeking some engineering assistance okay. with that, and should be coming forward with a permit application soon. Okay. Good. Anything else? Anybody else has? Just want to say these land acquisitions that we uh, we talked about today are fantastic. So wonderful. Thank yeah. everybody. Yeah, sometimes we go for a year without much to uh, boast about. Uh, to here in one day, we had you know uh, whatever two hundred fifty acres. Um, so that, more importantly, we connect. Large yeah. sections of connected you know, acres. property. Great. I'll have to go out. All right. So, next meeting's on the 26th. Yes. Um, Mason, as vice chair, the, on the 26th, because I'm, I'm double scheduled at 5 30 that day, uh, and I'm going to try and do both, that um, I may, I, I, I may be in the car on my cell phone, I Zoom with the video, but uh, it may be that I'll ask you to chair the meeting um, so that as soon as we wrap up, I can be parked outside and go to this other Cooley Dickinson event that uh, I've been invited to. So um, just a heads up on that. All right. No problem. Okay, great. Well, it's, it's finally turning into warm weather right now. We'll see. Uh, well, it did today. I almost got yeah. up around 80 degrees. Yeah, it's yes, 87 here. So. Really? Oh, yep. <laughs> uh, well, I don't know if this is good news or bad news, but the, uh, <laughs> the amplitude of the variability seems to be getting more extreme, So, um, which is what they predicted back 30, 40 years ago when they started talking about climate change. So it don't need that. to happen. Yeah. All right, everybody, good to see you. Maybe uh, uh, in answer to Jen's question, maybe um, not May, but maybe in June, we'll visit the question about, hey, can we um, meet indoors or meet in a real space? Um, what would be the option? Uh, there's another board, I'm, I'm on Tapestry Health, uh, and we haven't met indoors and we haven't met in person in a couple of years. 
and we've decided to meet in a pavilion in Oak Park for uh, our, our June meeting. Um, can a city board meet in a public space like that? We can, it couldn't be Oak Park because uh, of the fee associated to get in, um, but we could potentially look at different meeting locations. Outside can be tough with plan review and other types of things yeah, depending I on understand. what's on the agenda, but there, there's no requirement that we have to meet in City Hall. All right, well, let's let's revisit the question. Oh, and there's one other thing that uh, Bob Zimmerman from Broadbrook Coalition wanted a chance to come and talk with us about uh, dog enforcement at Fitzgerald Lake. Um, I forwarded his letter to Sarah and Wayne and said that we'd think about sometime in the next two or three of our meetings to invite representatives of, of Broadbrook. Um, and I don't know what the solutions might be. Uh, have, you know, one idea is having an animal control officer um, go there for an hour, once or twice a month, and hand out uh, summonses. They, they did a live uh, day-long uh, review of how many dogs they saw and how many were on leash and how many were off leash. I think there were 38 dogs and 30 of them were off leash. Um, so it's a uh, they now have documentation of, yep, people just blow it away. They're supposed to be, they walk past the signs with, you say, uh, we got a heavy dog on a leash and um, off they go. So um, anyway, Bob wants to have that discussion with us. So um, uh, we'll have to decide somewhere in the next couple of meetings where there's a space in the agenda. How crowded is the 26, sir? Uh, May 26th shouldn't be too many items, but a couple of them might take a little bit of time. So I Maybe the would one not after recommend that? 26th. Okay, let's look at the first meeting in June, which would be? It's June 9th. Okay. So we offer to Bob uh, that uh, June 9th would work for us, maybe in person or maybe on Zoom. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll send Bob an email, I'll copy you, Sarah. Um, and just to be clear, we can't direct the, the animal control officer. No, I know, to, to it's do, a, a yeah. police department employee rather than- um, Yeah, um, you know, when, when the facility is built in Northampton and they don't have to do all this driving back and forth between Northampton and Amherst, that should free up some of their time, but how that, that extra time is allotted is, is not up to the- um, no, no, I, know, I realize it's not up to us, but we we should have a voice um, since this is a, a an ongoing an ongoing problem, um, and they have gone through the effort of getting volunteers to track. Um, hey, there's all these dogs, and most of them, most of the time are off leash, and walking right by the by the signs that say they shouldn't be. So. Uh, there are, my, my guess is that if there were even a couple of tickets handed out and there were uh, signs that said uh, patrolled by animal control officer, um, that would help. It's not going to eliminate it because as soon as people are off by themselves and take the dog off the leash anyway. But, um, so there's limited amounts we can do, but let's, uh, let's at least have the discussion. Broadbrook is a good partner and uh, they do a lot for the city. So let, let's bring them in and see what we can come up with. All right. Thanks, everybody. All right. Thank you. Later. Have a good night. Thanks, everybody. Bye now.